And at that time, my mother took her down to Mexico. And it's been over seven months, and I've not been able to be in contact with any of them. And now, while we were going through this, and the social worker said she was going to give me the paperwork, my mother at that time was telling the social worker she wanted to give up the adoption. with uh, my co-host, Miss G. Georgette, and we're taking calls, listening to your stories, answering your questions. And I want to acknowledge one of our sponsors today, um, ShrineStore.com. If you want to be a rock star, you need to dress like a rock star. Check out ShrineStore.com. All right, we're going to take another call right now. It's going to be, I believe it's Bree from California. Bree, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Hi. Um, a little bit of both, I guess. Okay. I want to see if I have any rights or anything I can do. It's kind of a long story, so I'll try to keep it brief. But um, I lost my parental rights um, years back. And the day that the adoption was finalized to my mother, she called me to pick her up. My daughter was living with me consistently for over two years. And then um, she was with my mom for the weekend while my husband was in the hospital. And I got a call from the police department to come pick her up. But my mom was trying to put her on the 5150 lockdown because they got into a fight and that my daughter clearly didn't need to be there. So uh, CPS was called and they came out, they searched my home, they checked my background, my husband, they talked to my daughter. They um, told me that they were gonna have um, her supervisor, the social worker, um, write up paperwork, giving me legal responsibility of her um, medical and her education and promised my daughter that she would never have to go back there again. Well, we received a call randomly several days after that agreement, and uh, the social worker said that um, my mom was going to come and pick her up and um, that she can come back to me after the weekend, that she, uh, it's up to my mother whether she stays with me or not. And at that time, my mother took her down to Mexico, and it's been over seven months, and I've not been able to be in contact with any of them. And now while we were going through this and the social worker said she was going to give me the paperwork, my mother at that time was telling the social worker she wanted to give up the adoption. And the social worker told her that she could go to jail potentially for that and that it was not okay, that you can't do that. But then she goes and takes her down to Mexico. And the social worker, we had explained to her, my daughter, neighbors, my husband, about the violence and abuse that was going on with my mother. And we have a whole case going back to when I was a child with abuse from her. The social worker didn't look into any of the allegations. My daughter was on the floor screaming, crying, not wanting to go there. She told the social worker, if I have to go with Nana, something bad is going to happen to me. Social worker didn't care. And now it's been seven months since she's gone. And I have a feeling that she is um, being held in a psych ward because she has not been able to get to a phone or social media, hasn't talked to any friends or family or anything. And so I just want to see like, is there any way of making the social worker responsible, accountable for this? Or what can I do to try to get her back? Well, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to file some type of paperwork uh, with the court giving you standing or declaring you a presumed parent because you've lost your parental rights, that type of thing, um, in order for you to get your foot in the door to start fighting for, you know, rights to the child. Okay. And do I have, like, any case against CPS for doing this to her? Um, the child may have a case. It doesn't sound like you have a case because, theoretically and unfortunately, you're not the mother anymore. Right. And from watching all of your shows, I have realized now that when they took my parental rights, every step of the way was completely illegal. I wish I had your show back then when I was going through all this, um, but I did not know. So it's just been kind of a nightmare for a really long time. Right. Do you have the radio show on the playing in the background? Because I'm getting a revive. No, I don't. Oh, okay. 
Well, I, you know, what I, what I would suggest you do is on Monday or Tuesday, give me a call at the office. I can maybe walk okay. you through some detailed steps of what you need to do. Um, you know, because unless you have an attorney, you're not going to be able to figure this out by yourself. It's kind of an yeah. unu it's kind of an unusual situation. You know, you lost your parental rights. It really is. The mother gave yeah. you back the child. You're raising the child for a couple of years. How old's the child now? Twelve years. She just turned thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of an unusual situation, and I'm, it doesn't sound like your mother's going to want to cooperate. So you know, there's going to be a, a few hurdles you're going to have to jump over legally. Okay. Right. Okay. So triple eight triple eight six five eight two. Give me a call. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We have a few moments. Let's take a quick call from Lorena in California. Lorena, did you have a quick question you wanted to ask us? Yes. Go ahead. Um, um I'm in a very uh, bad situation. Like no, seven. Now he's eight. He turned eight um, two days ago, and he was removed uh, December six, twenty twenty one, and uh, uh, the it was by the school the bus driver. But the report exaggerated, and they said that he was running around up and down the street naked, and he wasn't. So he's autistic and he's nonverbal. And uh, he was taken as an emergency removal, and I don't know why. And so I read the report, and it's super exaggerated. And uh, I asked the social worker, I wanted him to go to my sister, I mean, to my daughter or sister. And she said, no, she got, she, she arrived to my house with three cops in Lakewood, California. And I haven't, and I didn't see him until I hired my monitor on Christmas Day. And I don't see him because they say they don't have monitors and he's nonverbal, so I don't know what to do. And then uh, <clears throat> I had my adjudication day on March 4th, mm -hmm. and the in the public, I know in the up in the attorney, she didn't defend me at all. And uh, so the everything was sustained, and I want to, I don't, I want to know what to do regarding visits. Um, okay. For nine hours I had a week. Now the judge gave me four. Okay, well, this is what you need to do. If you just had your adjudication, what you need to do is file a notice of appeal, all right? And you should try, uh -huh. to, try to get a lawyer to represent you in an appeal if you believe, you know, there was unjust injustice. Uh, regarding your visitations, I think that you should definitely talk to your lawyer and see if he or she is going to help you, you know, with getting visitation with the children. The excuse that they don't have enough monitors isn't, in my opinion, probably isn't probably true or isn't a good excuse. They're, they're required to give you family unification services, including monitored visits. They get millions and millions and millions of dollars from the federal government to do just that. So when they say they don't have, you know, they've run out, um, I always look at that with a raised eyebrow. Yes, so I, I want to know, I mean, would you, um, if I have, if I get a consultation with you, would you represent me? Because I don't know what to do at this point, because oh. everything is filed and distorted and a lot of lies on the report. I don't know, Marina, we can talk about that. Call me on Monday, 888 All right, and, you know, I'll talk okay. to you about it. But thank you for calling. Thank, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Call back okay. in a few weeks and give us an update of what's going on, okay? I sure will. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Lorraine.